Hey guys, and welcome to our joyful home. Today I'm gonna to be talking about baby stuff. And my list as a mom of who's had three kids, what's on my list? What's What are the baby items that I use in the first year of my baby's life? Um, this is a list that I've compiled after lots of, well, since my first son, I've eliminated a lot of things that I used to use with him, and I've simplified a lot of things as a mom of three. I've also added a few things that I didn't use with my son that are actually more helpful um, as I have more kids. And so this list has been revised several times. And so as a mom of three, I feel like I have a solid list of things that I use that are helpful for that first year. Uh, the way this video is gonna go is in the beginning, I'm gonna talk a lot about the newborn stage and the first few months of life. Um, things that you're gonna need in that time or in that stage. Um, I'm also going to touch on in the very beginning some things that you're going to need in the first few weeks of baby's life. Um, and then as the video prolongs, I'm going to be talking more about different things you're going to need or different things that I have found helpful um, throughout the, the first year. So, so yeah, that's kind of how the video is going to go. Um, and then I just want you guys to know that this is my opinion. This is not fact. This does not work for everyone. Everyone has different tastes, different things that they that work better in their family unit than. But I hope that this that my experience can help someone who is maybe overwhelmed with a lot of different baby items to choose from with their first baby or even second baby and they kind of want to narrow it down um, to what are other mothers using and as a mom of three I feel like I have some experience so I'm able to share that but again this is my opinion so please don't take it as fact obviously um, what works for me might not work for you but anyway I wanted to share this list because it's helped me and I'm excited to share it with you guys so let's jump right into this video Alright, so like I said before, we're going to talk a little bit about, in this, this very beginning stage of this video, um, we're going to talk about some things that you're going to need those first few weeks um, of baby's life and, you know, it's all new. You're in your first postpartum phase, or maybe it's not your first, but you're still wanting to watch this and see if you can gain or learn something. I still watch people's videos and I am a third time mom. I hope to be a fourth time mom at some point too, and I will probably still watch other people's videos just for other people's perspective. Sometimes it's nice to get someone else's perspective. Um, it just kind of helps you think through things. But anyway, so nonetheless, the postpartum period, those first few weeks are rough and you want to know what you really need. Um, and so I've compiled a list of things um, that you're going to want to use and that's worked for me. Anyway, so the first thing on my list is diapers and I mean disposable diapers I know where all the whole all the hype is of course cloth diapers and I think that's all well and good but just keep in mind that in those first few weeks of postpartum and new baby right you're not going to want to be washing a ton of diapers and your husband might not want to um, and if someone isn't someone else isn't will, willing to wash them for you then I would highly recommend getting disposable diapers and wipes as well um, I love disposable diapers and I do not use cloth diapers I have lots of friends who do and they love it and that's awesome for me personally I like disposable diapers because you can just throw them away I do use um, reusable wipes though so there you go. But anyway, I don't use those probably till they're about like, well, till I run out of the ones I bought for the first few weeks and then I go into them. Anyway, I would highly re recommend for at least the first two weeks or even the first month while you're healing to just go with the disposable diapers, okay? So, next on my list is um, blankets. So, blankets and muslin swaddles. Um, so, I do not use those ready-made swaddles they have that you you know put your baby in the pouch and you wrap them with the blanket and you know put the uh, velcro on and everything um, I feel like those are just for me they're a waste of time I don't feel like they really work on my kids and I don't like them anyway if you like them that's great I do use the muslin swaddles the really you know I like to get the really long ones um, and those are lightweight they're soft on baby's skin as long as you're getting good quality muslin. Um, also get cotton blankets are great too. Um, but yeah, that is essentially what I 
I like to use for swaddles is real muslin swaddles that don't have any Velcro or anything. They're just blankets. And then get some good warm blankets too. Uh, depending on the season the baby's born in, you can, you know, heavy blankets. It's just good to have both kinds. Um, you might have a cold day, so it's good to have those heavy blankets, but you might have a hot day, and so those are good for the really lightweight muslin blankets or uh, cotton, and uh, really easy, easy, easy breathable cotton and muslin is really great. But anyway, so make sure you get those blankets. Those are really great. They also work for birth cloths and nursing covers. Nursing covers, you just tie two edges together and make a, a hole, and you put it through your head, and then you can you got a makeshift um, nursing cover but um, you don't have to. I also use it for spit up or just burp rags. Um, what I like to use for, well actually we'll go on to that later. But anyway, so they're great multi-purpose <laughs> blanket, um, but they're really great for keeping baby nice and swaddled and comfy and cozy and feeling secure. So that's what's that. And then the other thing, so I guess item number three, on my list is easy baby clothes so make sure when you're in the first few weeks to just make it easier sorry there's bugs um, make it easier on yourself please don't overdo it with a bunch of snap snappy jammies you know you want to make sure especially at night that's easy zip up zip down kind of process uh, because in the middle of the night you're gonna have middle of the night feedings you're gonna have middle of the night diaper changes which is why you want easy clothes um, so just make it simple, make it easy. Don't get a bunch of glove mittens for your babies. If they're built into the jammy, great, we'll use those. If not, move on. Um, just extra stuff that you don't need, you don't want. Um, it's just gonna make it that much harder and that much laundry. Try simple, like a onesie, like a little t-shirt onesie. That's great. If it's hot, if it's cold, a nice full jammy onesie is great too. Um, but make it easy. Simple hat is fine if they need it. If not, move on. Um, Again, depends on what time the baby or what season the baby's born in. But make sure they're easy clothes and simple. When they get older, you can make it a little more complicated if you want to. Um, but anyway, so next number three, um, baby lounger. And now I don't know if you guys, have, most of you have probably heard of the um, Snow Me Organic baby lounger, and it's awesome. I love it. I did not use it with my other first two babies, and then my my most recent baby, I have used it. I love it. This is a thing that I added to my list that I didn't use with my other kids and I love it. Like I wish I had had it with my other two. Um, it is a definite, it's just awesome. It's great for co-sleeping. It's great for when you're in the kitchen and you want to cook or do something by yourself out, your hands being full, but the baby's happy enough to sit down, but you don't want to sit them on the floor because when they're on the floor they feel, well they don't feel comforted, <laughs> they feel alone and scared. And so if you can put them in a lounger, it's much better. So what the, the the Snuggle Me Organic Baby Lounger actually has, it's a big pillow looking thing and it has like a divot in the middle and so you set the baby in there and it keeps them nice and snug and warm and protected. They feel comfy, they feel, they feel protected I guess is the best way to explain that. But anyway, love it. I would say that that is a big thing within the first few weeks. Um, and so they are a bit expensive, so you can get off brands, you can get different kinds. Um, you can also make you make your own like makeshift one. I've done with my pre my older two kids. It's just a blanket, and you roll up the sides and call it good. Um, but yeah, so that's the number four. Now number five is bassinet. Um, I would recommend you get some sort of a co-sleeping bassinet. That would be preferable. Um, I don't have one, I do have a Moses basket, which is amazing because you can just pick the kit up and carry them around the house. Um, I like it because if they're still sleeping, you can carry them out everywhere. But anyway, something that's close to your bed that you can just literally set them in and bring them back out. Um, I usually use it most of the time for nap time. I don't usually use it at night because they usually are just sleeping with me for the first few weeks. Um, but I really like it for nap time. And um, it's nice because they're in their own separate little spot. It also teaches them a little bit of this is their bed. Not that you really need to be doing that a whole lot with their first few weeks. But anyway, I like that. I especially like it for the first two months of life after the baby's a month old. And actually from like two months, well, a month to three months, it's amazing. Because if your baby's not overly large, <laughs> um, put them in this little bassinet or Moses basket. And it works great for nap time. 
Anyway, so I really like that. And you can also bring it, bring the, the bed out with you. That's why I like most of the baskets. Next is a boppy. And now some people don't think this is really needed, but I like it. I've liked boppies with every one of my kids and I, I love them. Anyway, a boppy is this big pillow that goes around your waist. Um, it's really helpful for nursing. And even bottle fed babies, it's great because it gives your arms a rest. Um, I really like it. It's especially helpful in those first few days after baby has been born and you want to come out to the living room because you're tired, you're sick and tired of being in bed. It's mostly after one week <laughs> and I'm out in the living room and I want to sit down, but I need more cushion for the baby so that I'm not holding my arm up and my arms are tired from holding the baby. So it's somewhere to set the baby. If I'm on the computer when the baby is younger, it's also a great way to just kind of keep, help support the baby when you're nursing. Anyway. I love it, it's definitely essential for me. Uh, next thing on the list is a wrap, um, baby carrier wrap. So this is very much something that you don't need the first few days after baby, but as you have more children, it's very, very awesome to have. But a wrap is essentially a carrier that you kind of wrap around yourself and you can put your baby in there. Um, I have a couple videos on how to do a couple different wraps um, and wrap ties, but and I'll link them up here. But I really like those for the, since I've had more kids, it's really great to have my hands free. Um, but it's also really great when baby's feeling gassy, when baby is feeling unsettled, you can put skin on skin and keep them tightly. The wrap gives them, puts them tightly against you and so it's amazing. Anyway, I love the wrap for at least the, maybe, two weeks after you've had the baby is when I usually start using them um, and I've loved it with every kid my first one I didn't use as much um, but my second I used it all the time because I had a toddler running around and this time around I like it too but anyway so it's great wraps are great with newborns um, I wouldn't use an actual just strap in carry and carrier until your baby's at least like four or five months old all right, next thing is Castel soap. And so now we're getting into, it's been a week. I do not wash my babies. I do not give them their first bath until they are at least a week to a week and a half old. Um, just a personal preference. I, I want all those good oils and on their skin from being born to seep and soak up. I want the baby to soak up all those good, all that good stuff. Um, and so I don't wash them for a week and they smell fine and they are great and they could even go up to two weeks I believe they're just a baby um, and so anyway when I go to walk, give them their first bath I use pure castile soap that is unscented I will link also just so you guys know I'll link everything down below for you so you can go look at it um, but I really love castile soap because it's gentle and it, you can get it unscented um, but it doesn't have any harmful chemicals in it and it smells great too but I use that for shampoo and body wash for baby. And that's it. I actually use it for my hair and my body as well. So sometimes I use the scented stuff, but it's all essential oils and stuff. Anyway, so moving on. Um, gas relief. So this can include um, a couple different things. I like to use the homeopathic, the Highlands homeopathic brand of, uh, I think it's gas relief or something anyway, gas tablets or colic tablets. And then I also like to use, um, or I'll, I don't, really like it but some people like gripe water they say that works um, I used it with my first son or my firstborn I didn't like it um, chamomile tea you can actually brew some good strong doesn't have to be super strong but chamomile tea and just give them a few drops and that can help with the gas um, and so either way I think the Highlands um, homeopathic works better just my opinion um, and then you can also use um, like you can rub their tummy with some diluted with other like a carrier oil, carrier oil like coconut oil um, with like maybe some lavender and some other essential oils that can help with baby's tummy um, but yeah so there's that and then next is snot sucker <laughs> I will link all these things down below but this is kind of what it looks like I'll try to put pictures up every time I say a product too um, but it's like a nose sucker with like this syringe looking thing and um, it like you hold on to, you you suck it out with your the air of your you suck it out with your mouth they're boogers it might sound disgusting but trust me you don't get any boogers there's nothing like that it's completely clean and anyway, I will 
link it below. Um, it's kind of interesting. I can't remember what it's called, but I love it. I hate those bulb ones because every time you do that, you can't like clean it out. I mean, you can, but I find that they mold easily because there's not a way to like dry it out. Whereas this one, you can clean it um, in the dishwasher, I think too, but you can just clean it really easily. Um, anyway, so next thing is bottles. Now we're getting into baby is probably about a month old. I do not give my babies a bottle for probably a month. I want them to really get a good latch. I breastfeed all my babies. And so if you're not, then this is whatever, you know, you can move on. But I breastfed all my babies and I'm breastfeeding still my youngest. And I do not start bottles until they're at least a month old. Um, and I always use a a close to oh, how do I say this um, a more breast like nipple um, so it most closely resembles your nipple essentially um, a, or a human nipple um, those bottles are the best and breastfed babies take to those bottles much easier than they do regular bottles um, I will link up here a new bottle that I found that I am definitely using with our next child it is it looks literally like a boob like nipple <laughs> it's super cool anyway I want to try this bottle with my other kids and I think it's silicone like super cool anyway even the color looks like a breast but I really think that would be cool to have because I'm not happy with my plastic bottles I really want to throw them away even though the nipples great anyway moving on so bottles uh, after a month and then I only I never formula feed um, I just I uh, whatever extra breast milk I have, I just use that. So if I need to be gone for an hour or two. Um, so anyway, next thing is electric nail file. And again, uh, this is after they're probably a month or two old, depending on how fast your child's nails grow. Electric file, um, it's amazing because it files them really quickly and it's gentle. So they have different files for different ages and it's super cool. I love it and I'm using it with every child now and I actually love it for my, even myself. Uh, next is a car seat. I think that kind of goes without saying. You, all, everybody needs a car seat. Please get one that is safe. You can always look online, Google it, and Google the safest car seats of that year. Um, and then next is uh, a binky. Okay, so this, again, I, I don't usually like to give them a binky till they're at least a week old. Um, you can kind of start introducing it because they can get confused sometimes between nipples. Um, but yeah, you can do that. I would say um, some of my kids have taken, like my first two kids took right to a binky. My third baby, he took to it and then he just dropped it. He didn't want anything to do with it after he started teething. So, he, and some babies don't like it. So I'm not going to say this is an essential that we everyone needs, but some babies like it. And sometimes it's nice when you really need a break. <laughs> or they have gas. Next thing on the list is a nursing cover. Um, so this, again, I don't use in the first few weeks. We're kind of past the first few weeks now. This is now into, we're getting into things that you're just gonna be using for the rest of the year. Um, as you know, this baby is still a baby. Nursing covers. I personally do like, I really like nursing covers that surround your entire body and that you just put your head through and they cover everything. They're nice, they're breathable, most of them. If you don't get a, please get a breathable one. Um, makeshift ones aren't always great because especially if you have a super wiggly baby, they just kick them off. Um, I personally like to be a little extra modest and I wanna be respectful of other people. Um, I don't mind, I, I definitely breastfeed in public. I do not think, I think that is a normal thing and I think that every woman should be, feel comfortable enough to do that. I just like to make sure that I do not, I'm not showing my breast because that's a personal belief I have. I don't think that women should be exposing their breasts everywhere. Um, but I, I'm, and I'm not trying to judge anyone who does, but that's my personal, personal belief. Um, and so anyway, but I think that's more for me. It's a modesty thing that I want to make sure that I'm modest and respectful. And, but I also know that I am well within my rights to rescue my baby out in public. So nursing cover is nice. I would recommend getting the ones that surround your entire body. Um, and then you can also um, put them on your car seat because a car seat cover, so it's like two in one. It's awesome. You can also use it as a scarf, but not many people use the scarves anymore. It's kind of an outdated thing. All right, next is, and last thing for this, like the, I don't know, not last thing, but 
we're gonna after this we're gonna be moving into the older baby stages um of things you're gonna need as they get older amber necklace so this I just like and honestly get a high quality one there's a few companies I will I'll list them here um, you can get them on Amazon and that's great there's a couple other companies that are a little bit more reliable um, and the ambers uh, I would just say higher quality you know where it came from that kind of thing um, but amber necklaces are great for managing a natural na uh, pain relief manager and so it can kind of help with gas and teething and all that kind of stuff and the naturals oil and the amber uh, and the amber rocks actually can help with pain so it's very great for adults too all right so now we are past three months kind of um, not really we're just we're getting into the older baby you've passed the newborn stage and so now your baby um, will probably maybe not my babies didn't start getting di diaper rashes till they were older but my babies do can tend to have dry skin sometimes depending on if I'm ha eating a balanced diet or not but it's always nice to have natural oils on hand if they have a little bit of a skin issue or something you can also just put breast milk on it but an essential I like to have on hand is organic cold pressed coconut oil or organic or at least non GMO castor oil cold pressed as well um, these are great oils that can help heal the skin and they're really great instead of diaper rash creams or um, you know creams for their faces and stuff this stuff is actually really good for their skin and so coconut oil and castor oil is something that is a definite need especially if they're teething and they have diaper rashes and things you know whatever might be needing like if they have cradle crap um crap i mean cradle cap <laughs> yeah, whatever um you can rub oil either coconut or castor oil on their head and like gently scrape it with a brush or a comb baby comb um i would say that's that's a, a good thing that's also something that I would say is that'll be the that's a neck that's the next thing is some sort of comb and you don't have to buy a baby comb you can just use yours but it's nice to use that for at least getting the cradle cap off their head um, and then the next thing is um, teething tablets so my kids always start anywhere from two and a half months to three months teething and so the Highlands Teething or Oral Pain Relief Tablets are great. Um, they work amazing and I've used them and you can use them all the way up till they're three. Um, they work amazing in eliminating a lot of pain that they're having and discomfort. Um, and so just make sure you have a lot of different teething remedies on hand. I do not use baby Tylenol. Um, I do not, I try not to use that at all because I really think that that messes up with their systems. All right, next thing is moccasins. And okay, babies don't need shoes. They just don't, you guys. Um, once they get older and start walking, that's when you're gonna want shoes. And the best kind of shoes for babies is moccasins. Things that wrap around their feet, that still let their tiny toes wiggle around a ton and almost like they're walking barefoot, but their feet are still covered, especially if it's cold outside. Um, so I would highly recommend moccasins. Next is a um, is bibs. So you're gonna want when your baby starts to eat, which probably isn't going to be, well, for me, it's not usually until like, okay, I can't say this because that would be a lie. Most of the time I've started my kids little bits of food at like six months, um, very tiny bits and only stuff that's super digestible, like vegetables and fruit and only the simpler ones. Anyway, um, I would like to with the next baby even start later than that and I always do baby led weaning I try to anyway with this last baby I did I tried to do that really well anyway when you start feeding them you are gonna want a bib and a bib the best bib I have found so far is the one that is a silicone bib and it has a little cup that like catches all the food that falls and it's amazing because you don't waste food and you can just scoop it up and put it back on their plate because they're still learning how to eat and they drop things anyway those bibs are awesome all right next I'm trying to speed it up a little bit because this video is taking a lot longer <laughs> but there's a lot to cover these aren't just the essentials these are things that you're gonna use that you might want to use and things that I have found really useful anyway next is stroller you're gonna want a stroller if you want to go on that walk and you don't want to be you don't want to carry the baby um, you can carry the baby, but you know, sometimes it's nice, especially if you're jogging, to just push the baby. Strollers are great for outings, um, fair, the fair, and multiple other events. Anyways, that Next. is my list. I hope it was helpful to you guys. I know there's a lot of stuff I was talking about, but I wanted to cover most everything. 
Um, obviously there's going to be some stuff that I didn't talk about completely, but that's okay. Whatever works for you, right? This is the most, this is stuff I found most important and most helpful for me. Um, and so anyway, but I hope this was helpful, like I said, um, and yeah, the reason I wanted to share this was to be of help to other moms who maybe need some help deciding what to do. Um, I, next video, hopefully, or in the next couple of videos, I want to put out a video of things that I don't use. Uh, baby items I don't use because there's a lot of baby items that I think are silly and don't need to be used at all. Um, I also want to do a video on different stuff to um, put on your registry and things that you actually do need on a registry. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about those videos and if you think I should make a video on those things. Also, comment down below if you have any other essentials that or essentials or baby items that you would like to add to this list. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your week.